if you want to look a certain way, have a slim waist, there are certain things you should do and things you should not do. She's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's lining up to see her. She's a right, so I'm a serial addicted French fashion loving London girl. Fat in this kind of area is something that I yeah, I struggled with for a while. It's the first place where I would say I started to feel uncomfortable when I started putting on weight. And when I started losing weight, it was the first place where I realized like I got into the shower and I was like, oh my God, I'm getting that. My stomach was getting nice and trim. I mean, if you've ever lost weight yourself, you'll know that feeling of like, oh my God, it's, it's actually working. All this stuff that I'm doing has actually paid off. Honestly, words cannot even express the way I felt. Even if you haven't experienced that yet, trust me, you will get there. It's about consistency. It's about focusing on your goal, focusing on your purpose, your solid reason why, not just to lose weight, but to be healthy. The first time I ever measured my waist, I was nine inches bigger than I am now. We're all kind of built differently. So obviously a small waist on you might not be the same as me or her. Or... So I feel like I don't need to share my exact measurements, but obviously I am a model. So I am kind of, you know, the sample size of a model. Today, I'm gonna to tell you the real deal. If you wanna change the way you look on the outside, again, you have to concentrate on the healthy lifestyle, not just losing weight, losing weight, losing weight. Concentrating on having a healthier lifestyle is the only way you're gonna have sustainable long-term weight loss. But at the same time as being healthy, <laughs> sometimes you've got to be strategic you kind of want to be careful with the kind of exercises that you're doing make sure you watch the whole video to the end because i really really want you to avoid making any mistakes that might sabotage your goals anyway there are four things i know well, three that i recommend one that I, I don't recommend but i know a lot of people like quick fixes they want to cut corners and do things that sound like they're going to be the easiest way the first thing i want to talk about before i start talking about the stuff i actually did is waist trainers. There was a time where they were being advertised everywhere. They do work, sort of. There's been a lot of controversy around them because I feel like a lot of celebrities, influencers were advertising them as if they were the thing that got, you know, them their small waist when it wasn't. I don't know for sure about everyone, but I mean, some of these people were lying. But let me tell you the real deal about waist trainers. They don't actually cause long-term harm, sort of. Because to be honest, as soon as you take them off, your body goes back to normal. And that's kind of the problem. If you don't wear it pretty much all the time, your waist is gonna right back. I tried one on and I pretty much had to take it off straight away because it was painful. And I'm a beauty is pain, you know, no pain, no gain kind of gal, but this was a lot. I did meet a girl though once who actually used to wear one and it helped her get from a 28 inch waist to 26 inch waist. But she had to wear it all the time. When she was at home, when she was sleeping. I did a second job with her where she literally came to set with the waist trainer on. I also feel like it can be kind of psychologically damaging as well. I can literally imagine someone going on holiday, forgetting it at home and having a panic attack. In my opinion, the pain, the struggle, the inconvenience, it's not worth it. It's not worth the very, very, very short-term benefits. Okay, so let's move on to the real deal, the things that I actually did to lose inches off my waist. The first thing I did that gave me a smaller waist was drastically reducing my sugar intake. To get a smaller waist and keep it looking, you know, snatched, you've got to reduce weight on your whole body, overall weight. You can't only lose weight in one area or one place. In my other videos, I have talked before about reducing sugar, but it's because it just really worked for me. In general, the science says that you just have to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight. But I think specifically when it comes to the abdominal and waist area, it really is about the quality of your food as well. I mean, technically you could eat cookies and be in a calorie deficit. I mean, it would be hard though because you probably wouldn't be very filling. I know for a fact that if I did that, my waist would not be small. Maybe I would lose weight, but I'd probably be the definition of skinny fat. Abs are made in the kitchen and so is now glass waist. So if you wanna lose some inches off your waist, you need to, you know, with the sugar. Listen guys, I love a good drink. But if you're drinking regularly, every day or every night, multiple times a week, I'm talking to you girls out there that can't resist the two for one cocktails. You will have a dad or an uncle or that neighbor that has, you know, the beer belly and they don't call it a beer belly for nothing. 
Alcohol really makes you put on weight in this area. And you're not gonna get small waves drinking alcohol on a regular basis. I will never forget my university days when I used to drink literally maybe three, four times a week. That was the only time after I lost all that weight that I actually started gaining it back a bit. I mean, I didn't really care though because I was having too much fun. But I suddenly started to lose the weight when I stopped going out so much and I realized like, oh. Yeah, maybe it was the alcohol. It can be really hard depending on your culture though. So like in British culture, we drink all the time. It's even more so in some European cultures. I mean, some people have a glass of wine every night. Drinking a glass of wine every night is not doing you any favors. I mean, we can still have fun obviously because you know, we gotta live life, but you know, just be strategic with it. So nowadays, yes, I get invited to quite a few events where there's free alcohol or I'll go out for brunches with my friends, dinner with my boyfriend. But now I decided for myself that I pick one day a week to drink. I literally posted about this on my Instagram recently. If you're not already following me on Instagram, definitely check out my Instagram. I'm gonna post more like food ideas and snack ideas, lunch ideas, breakfast ideas. Just ideas. When I do these videos, I really want you guys to know the purpose behind what you're doing and how to actually lose weight. And then on my Instagram, I can show you just more practical ideas. So I posted a picture of champagne because when I do drink, I do have either champagne usually or a gin and tonic. And the reason I have champagne is not to be bougie. Champagne is just normally served in a smaller glass and it's just like a slower drink. It's the shape of the glass as well that makes it more of like a sip, slow drinking time. Gin and tonics are great because I can do a slim line tonic, which is zero calories, and then I can get the gin. Most kind of clear alcohols, gin, vodka, they tend to be quite low calorie compared to, let's say, the brown alcohol. If I go for a cocktail, you should go for a margarita, no sugar. Tequila is the lowest calorie alcohol, and yeah, it just reminds me of Mexico, and I love Mexico. If you want to add a bit of sweetness to any of your drinks, obviously you can just grab a few limes or lemon and squeeze it into your drink. Next thing that's going to help you to lose inches off your waist is exercise. I mean, it's pretty obvious, but just moving more in general is going to 100% help you lose weight on your waist. Number one, it speeds up the rate of which you lose those inches. Number two, it keeps you looking good. It speeds up your metabolism. And after building your metabolism for a while, you tend to have a bit more wiggle room. You can eat like a random donut or like a, a bit of birthday cake and it's not really going to affect you. Whereas when you don't work out, you can feel your stomach and weight change like, like that. Those kind of instant kind of fluctuations are not gonna happen as much when you actually work out. Like I was saying before though, you wanna be a bit strategic with the type of exercises that you do if you want to have a small waist. Cardio is great, you're gonna burn calories. Strength exercises are great because you're toning up that muscle. You just wanna be careful with what strength exercises you do. If you're doing like certain ab exercises, they can actually like build your sides out that might make you look a bit square not that there's a problem of looking more straight i mean i know so many gorgeous girls especially in my industry who have a more kind of straight figure but obviously yeah this is a video about having a small waist so i want to be clear about what i said about exercise like i said it can give you a bit of wiggle room but um, you can't eat whatever you want and then expect to, you know, have a banging body. Your diet is the most important thing. You cannot outrun bad eating habits. You cannot outrun unhealthy lifestyle. Honestly, I love working out, to be honest. I'm gonna do a workout video soon, I promise. But this is why my videos are more food focused because when I first started trying to lose weight, I literally would eat so much crap. I didn't care. I thought like, oh my God, I'll just go to the gym and work it off. But then I would go to the gym, get on the treadmill, and I'm just staring at the calories part, staring and staring and staring. It's trying so hard to burn off 1,500 calories of McDonald's, which by the way, is very hard to do, and I didn't ever actually do it. Bruh. But when you're exercising this way, it becomes more like a punishment for eating badly, and that's, it's just not it. Exercise should never be looked at as a punishment. It should always be something fun, something that you enjoy doing. As humans, moving our bodies is supposed to make us happy. Anyone who has mental illness problems, anxiety problems, depression will even tell you that when they exercise, they feel so much better. If you're doing exercise and you're absolutely hating it, you need to do something else. Like running, there's rowing, there's bike riding, there's so many different things. You can lift weights, you can go Pilates, you can go canoeing. On my channel, I do talk specifically about healthy eating habits because it's the main thing. I mean, there's no treadmill, there's no amount of weights that's gonna erase the fact that you just ate, you know, a whole pizza and a bunch of Shake Shack. Unless of course you play sports or like you're, you know, some sort of trainer or bodybuilder. Trying to use your exercise to erase bad eating habits is a bad idea. So for me, I don't enjoy like mat strength 
well, I do like them. I don't enjoy mat strength exercises as much as I do enjoy cardio. I do quite a bit of ab workouts and leg workouts, but I can't do that same routine over and over again. But I can do cardio over and over again. I can't do the same routine on the mat over and over again. Cause after three days, I just get bored. But I recently got over my fear of bikes and I love bike riding guys. I learned to bike ride literally about two weeks ago and I just, I love it. It's my new favorite thing. I could ride for hours, whereas the mat workouts I could do for about 20 minutes, half an hour. I literally now understand why the Peloton bikes were so, so popular during the lockdown. Anyway, guys, that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and then click right here and I will see you in that video.